Hi, my name is Keith Knuth, and I'm going to give a demonstration on how to start a workflow from an API in In4OS. If you did not know, In4OS includes a robust API gateway, and the API gateway includes an ION API suite with workflow endpoints in it. You can connect from your application to the API gateway to trigger a workflow. So let's see how that works. I'm in the In4OS portal and I've navigated to the API gateway. I've done that by clicking on the app switcher and selecting In4ION API. The first screen in the gateway are, is a listing of all your available APIs. I can use the search at the top of the screen to search for ION and I, if I found the ION suite. If I double click on that, I'm presented with a list of endpoints that this suite provides. There are two endpoints for workflow, these two ION process endpoints. The first one, the application endpoint, is the one we want. So we'll click on the documentation for that. We're presented with the Swagger UI for this API endpoint. If you're not familiar with Swagger, it's a standard UI from a industry group to kind of help uh, uh, users no matter which uh, type of API gateway or itch which API connection point they go to, the documentation is, is always the same and familiar to you. And a nice part of this is that you can actually, the, the, the documentation is actually dynamic, meaning you can test the API right from this page. So at the bottom of the available methods is the workflow start. API. We'll click on that to expand it and scroll down. You can see it gives me some information about this API, including that there's two inputs, a logical ID and a JSON body. And it gives me a, an example of how that JSON should be laid out. But like I said, I can also press the try it out button and actually execute this API. The first input, logical ID, if you don't know the format for that, it is lid then in for ion desk and usually dot one check with your system administrator to see uh, how your environment is set up but this is the typical lid or logical id the identifier for the ion application the second input is this json body and like i said this generic uh, json is given to you as just an example let me paste in my json and you can see that the JSON here uh, gives the workflow name, in my case, KK test. The instance name, this is just the description and the, and the name of this particular instance of the workflow that I'm about to start. It can be anything that you want. And then in case that I have input variables that the workflow requires, I can list those as well. My workflow takes variables, but they all have default values, so I can run without them. Let's press the execute button. And you can see down below in the server response section, I got a code 200, which is great. That means it was successful. And it's returning the ID of the workflow that was started. Perfect, it worked successfully. If I wanted to change this and um, uh, my, um, my uh, workflow did uh, require input, here's an example of how that input variable section of the JSON would look. It would just include the name. In my case, the name of the variable is company, the data type, which is a string, and the value, which is three, four, five. And I can execute that. And again, I should get a 200. Yep, and the ID was 566. Okay, so we've found the API. We've seen the format and the syntax to execute the API. Now let's bring up an API client and actually test this from outside uh, uh, in 4OS. I'm gonna use the popular API client called Postman. It's free. You can just Google Postman and download clients for Windows and Mac and Linux. Um, you can, this could be your own code, your own application that you're writing, uh, but I'm gonna use Postman just because it's so popular uh, and easy to use. You can see that I've opened up the client and I've chosen the post operation because back in uh, the API gateway, it told me that the start workflow uh, method was a post method. And then it needs to know the endpoint that I'm going to c connect to. So back in the API gateway, when I look at this, I can either copy it right from here, the slash v1 workflow start, or if I want the whole thing, I can go down to this request URL and grab everything right here, copy, and paste that in to um, this field right here. 
Okay. Then to complete my setup uh, in, the, in the Postman client, I need to walk through these tabs here. The first one beginning with params. This first parameter is going to be uh, where I store my logical ID. You can see I've already written that in logical ID and value, just like I had put it in to the Swagger UI. All right. The second tab is authorization. This is where I fill in my token for the OAuth2 connection to the gateway. If you don't know how that works, uh, you can do your own research on how OAuth2 authorizations work. But basically, I, I need to fill in the uh, callback URL, auth URL, uh, client ID, secret, access token URL, all from a credentials file that the API gateway gives me when I set up an authorized application. More information on that is available in the API Gateway documentation or other videos online uh, from Infor. Make sure you choose the Send as Basic Auth header, then request the token. It may ask you to uh, uh, enter your credentials. I just did recently, so it's just asking me to allow the access. And now I have a new fresh token to do my test with. The headers tab, you do not need to do anything here. Uh, Postman uh, fills in everything for you, except make sure this content type is application slash JSON. And then in the body, this is where I fill in most of the information. You can see I filled in the JSON that we already had uh, pasted into the uh, API Gateway Swagger UI with my name and my uh, instance name for this test. And that's all you need. Make sure, uh, sorry, one more thing, make sure you have the raw uh, option selected here for the JSON as well. That's all we need. Now we can hit send. And you can see we got back a successful response with an ID of 567, okay? So there's a successful test from an API client. Back in InfoOS, if I wanted to see uh, if I really did create a workflow and not just trust the result from the API call, I could go into the Ion desk and select from the left left hand menu monitors and workflows and then active workflows and i'm going to get a report of all my workflows that are running in the system and at the top i can search by my workflow name kk test and i can see that kk test is running i have 14 instances of workflows uh, running uh, and if i select this row i can click on workflow instances and get a list they're in um, sequential order so the bottom one is the newest and sure enough 567 is the id that i got back from my postman client and if i hover over this source icon i can see that yep this workflow was kicked off from an api call now we went through this example very quickly there's much more information in three sources the swagger documentation in the api gateway itself we saw that you can read more uh, information about the examples it gives there the Ion Desk user guide, you can access that on docs.info.com, and also our API Gateway SDK on GitHub. That URL is github.com slash InforCloud. If you go to that website and scroll down to the Ion API SDK, you'll find our open source code examples that is shared freely with you to understand how to connect to the API Gateway and how to do that OAuth2 authorization.